Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is uh, Rick McLeod, the uh, History Hound, and today we have the, uh, the pleasure of being with uh, Dominique Coquillo, uh, who is the proprietor of Continental uh, Hair. Uh, been on Main Street for quite a, a while, and I've been looking forward to sitting down with Dominique and, uh, and talking about uh, his past. Uh, his family coming here, uh, his coming to Newmarket, uh, his love of Newmarket. So uh, thank you very much, Dominic, for allowing us to interview you. So your family has been in Canada for a little while. That's right. And I've been here in Newmarket since 1969. I started the, the business in 1969 in May up uh, 146 Main Street. It was called Continental Air. But my family's been in Canada since 1936. Like that's my grandfather, my mom's side. He came to Canada in 1936. And uh, I have to tell you that he came illegal to Canada. Like a lot of people at the time, they left the country and come to Canada for a better life. But he came uh, at, uh, Pierce 21 in Halifax, and he he got there. And then when he got off the boat, everybody who had a, somebody that sponsored them, they went one lane. And the other one who had no sponsor, they had to go some other lane. And they stamp uh, on the front of his uh, forehead, W-O-P, and that stand for without paper. So he had to wait for a little while in uh, Halifax. He had his brother with him. So him and his brother, they went to there in Halifax. And then they, 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 they hired with the CP Railway. At the time they were building the railway in north of Ontario. And they sent him and his brother in the Scriber, Scriber, Ontario. He's about an hour and a half from Thunder Bay. Is called Thunder Bay today. Then it was uh, Poor Ark and Fort William. And then they, they got the two cities together. And today they call them uh, Thunder Bay. And how long was he here before uh, he brought? Did he bring anybody over? or Him and his brother. Then they both brought their family on the 50, before the 50s. I'm not, I don't know the right time, but the, before the 50s, uh, and then they both had a house that in, in, in the Scriber, and uh, after a little while, like my uh, grandpa and his brother, they had their family here, and I know my uncle had a baby in, in the Scriber called Joel, and my, my grandfather, my side, he had a, also a son named Joel, and uh, he worked for CP Railway when he when he became an old enough to work. But I have to tell you that uh, my mom has two other sisters. They stay behind, behind in Italy. Like my mom got married around 48, 48, 19, or maybe before, no, 19, 43, 44. And the other two sisters were older than her. They got married too, but their husband came to Canada. In 1950, seemed to be that grandmother and all of them, they came to Canada. So your father was born up in Scriber? No, my daddy he was born in Italy and uh, he met my mother in Italy and then I said in 1944, they got married because they were still in Italy at mm -hmm. that time. After that time, they come to Canada, the rest of the family, but my wife, my wife. Sorry, my mom, she stayed behind with her, her husband. But then in 1950, my dad emigrated to Canada. And he also, but he, at the time was different because he was sponsored by grandpa and he stayed with him for a while. And then he also went to work with the CP Railway. But it didn't last too long because uh, at the time, I think the railway, up the railway had already been done and uh, Mr. Black, who was an engineer from England, was transferred to Quebec. So my dad and other people, they went to work in Quebec, but uh, my daddy only left in Quebec for a couple of weeks and then 
he came to Toronto and he started working with uh, American Standard uh, for a while and then he went to work uh, with the electrical, uh, across the road was an electrical company, General Electric, and he worked there for a while. And then they started working on the subway and since uh, working with American Standard was kind of danger because of the the power of the porcelain was no good for your lungs. So he went to work at the uh, at, uh, Blue Subway and he worked there for a long time. And I even know the company was, uh, oh boy, that's a big name for me. I think it was uh, McMillan Construction Company because he used to tell us this McMillan was good to, to him. Yeah, and then in 19, I think it was 1954, like by that time they had the finish, I think, the subway on Bloor Street. And he, who was different back, who become a part of the government. And uh, I think they sold it that arrow to the American, and then there was no work anywhere. A lot of people, they left Ontario, and then he had a hard time work and at the time he, he was going up and down looking for a job but eventually he got the job and then in 19 i think it was 1957 grandpa decided because they had a bought a house there on in toronto on campbell and dupont uh, grandma grandpa uncle joined my dad but then they decided to come back in italy at the time so they returned to italy yeah, because he, um, uh, my grandfather retired in 1957. And at the time, they were giving him uh, $60 from CP Railway and $50 was from the old age pension. Old, you know, the old age. Yeah. And you were born in Toronto? I was born in, no, in Italy, 1948. So he went back and you went back with the family, obviously, and then you were born. Well, I, yeah. uh, my mama was in Italy. Okay, that's and right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, in 1950, Daddy came over here. Yeah, and then in 1950, well, at the time, the people didn't come to stay in Canada. Uh, according to Italian people, they came here to make a little bit of money and to go back home and make uh, their life there, because around the time, like uh, they were expecting the boom to come back. After the war, they were expecting something to happen, and everybody wanted to beat the, the you know, the system there and come back with a little money instead of business. Because uh, this is in my father's side. My my father's side, they had already a business. They used to make uh, clay bricks and uh, for the for houses and the for the roof. They used to make those uh, tiles for the roof too. So Daddy wants to change from. Uh, because they had a few people working for them. Instead of making this product by hand, he wanted to make a, a machine, but he never did. He never had enough money to, you know, to try that. But I, some of my family did, like uh, Uncle Tony, and he became a rich, rich man. Ah. Yeah. So you, you went back to Italy. What prompted you to come back to Canada? I came, I came to Canada, Canada in 1964. We all come back to me, my mother, because then it was already here in 1964. Me, my mother, my, I had a sister and a brother that we came. And then uh, we lived here for a little bit when my dad went back. After a little while he went back and I think he wanted to retire there. But everybody went back and I stay here. And I remember I started work in 1964. Uh, Bayview Village Mall, and then I worked there until 1969, and now we started a new market here, 1969, in May I come to new market, and I started a business up at 146 Main Street, the Main Street and Millard, and I had a, Tony, my partner there, and then we stayed there together until, well, good time, and then we opened up the Lodge of San Luis in Aurora, we opened up a Continental too by the Upper Canada Mall, and Tony went and worked on Young Street today. He opened up a shop in there on his own on uh, Bristol Road and uh, Young Street. Was he 
your cousin, Tony? No, we're not related. You're not related. Isn't that no, funny? I always thought related. you were related. No, no, we're just friends, good friends, and we start working together. Yeah, we just know each other because I have another friend that, that he he came to Bayview Village Mall there, and he said, "Why don't you come in Newmarket? Because we've been together, we grew up together, like we're good friends." And so he was able to, you know, to talk to me to come into Newmarket. So, so we did. As a matter so, of fact, we lived together for a long time. We live on, on 17 Walt, Walter Avenue, 17, yeah. And we stayed there together for a while. And then uh, I think this uh, gentleman by the name of Orlando got married. So I needed the house and we went to find another place to live. And then uh, I got married too in 1974. And, uh, Was your wife, you went back to Italy too? Oh, well, we knew each other from Italy, we got married, well, we were in four years we stayed together and then we just, we, together in a sense, by mail, we talked to each mm -hmm. other on the phone, but I went a couple of times back and we spent a little time mm -hmm. together, but in 1964 we, we got the big uh, wedding. Wow. So she came over here to stay with you? Yeah, she came to stay and live with me because uh, by that time I had bought a house in Aurora on Devon's Drive in Aurora, 17 Devon. And uh, we lived there with a little bit of money. We had a little furniture and then we started our life in there and uh, we had uh, a daughter first and then we had uh, another son and then another son. And we live there until 1990, from 74 until 99. And I have to tell you, at the time we had a mayor here in Newmarket when the, the town office used to be on Main Street to there by the name of Ray Twitty. And he was telling me, if I don't move it to Newmarket, they're going to kick me back in Italy. <laughs> so I was a little concerned and want to go back. So I came up by the house on South Road. And we've been living there since then, since 1990. Let's talk a little bit about uh, 1969 Newmarket. What are your memories of Newmarket back in 1969? Well, I came to Newmarket in 1969. Anyways, Newmarket was far away from Bayview Village Mall, from Shepherd and Bayview there. It was far away. I came up on Young Street. And when I got to Oak Ridges, I thought it was the end of the world. But I made it. I came and visited my friends here. And uh, at the time, the town was maybe around 10, 15,000 people. I know more than that. I remember one of the guys that was down Queens Park, uh, I can't remember his name. He was uh, telling me that they are going to open the 404 at the time. And I, you know, because I was telling them it's too far away to come to Newmark. But then uh, we, you know, we kind of back and forth, and we manage, we manage, and being young, you travel back and forth, and you get a friend here, a friend there, and life goes on. So how old were you when you started up there on the on 20, Lark? 21 years old. 21? Yeah. 21 yeah. and single? Yeah. Single, and I live oh. by myself, like without family when I stay right. by myself. And... Uh, it was hard, but it was a lot of fun, you know, like three guys living in the same house. That was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of times we had to cook for ourselves and being single guys, we didn't spend much time cooking. You know, we used to get uh, food to deliver or maybe go and buy stuff and bring it over and we eat. I remember that there was... Uh, was tough on the way. We had this lady who used to clean our house, and I remember that uh, she used to do our cleaning. She used to go on Saturday, and we had like 200 pairs of socks, and she had to wash these socks. And I think she put Javex and those socks that come out about two million different colors from the washing machine. And then she didn't want to get paid because she was a an older lady and she should know better. But she says. She didn't even get paid. She disappeared. I never see her since then. Wow. Yeah. So, 
I assume at that uh, time you made friends in Newmarket. Who were some of the, the people that you met when you first came to Newmarket? Mm, like uh, my age, I met uh, a lot of them. There was the Compass at the time. The Compass was a place, uh, a bar at uh, Newmarket Plaza. I remember, uh, I'm not going to make any names, but a lot of male and female friends, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I met I met a lot of nice people in town. I met the guys like uh, it used to be the uh, at the pick and cause they had a Mr. Beer, yes. and not Charles Beer, it was uh, Harold Beer, and uh, he was a nice guy. He kind of told me a few stories and he teach me a few things, like he says uh, because I was uh, at that 21, uh, you started a business. I was a little shy. I have to admit. And he told me that shyness is a virtue that comes from above. I didn't understand what that meant, speaking broken English then and now. <laughs> and he says that's a virtue. And I said, what's a virtue about? Because you want to talk to people, you want to talk to girls at 21. But he told me that if you listen, you learn more. He says, don't talk too much. Listen more and talk less and you learn a lot more. And he says, uh, everyone you see, make sure that he's your friend. You don't need the two men, but if I want to be your friend, fine. If they don't want to be your friend, that's okay too. But at, at least say hi and try to make them to be your friends. If, he's, if they don't end up to be friends, that's okay. He says, because you really don't need a lot of people to live your life. But at least that you approach somebody else and it's a good... Uh, According to him, it was a good thing, you know, being a good Samaritan of the town. Enjoy your people around you because that was the key to him. So, oh, it's a good thing that you, you got over being shy because, you know, being a, uh, a, a barber, my God, uh, you got to talk to everybody. Yeah, I had to talk to everybody, but I think because most of the time I knew that my English wasn't... Uh, as good as it should be, and I used to shy away because of that. You know, you come to a town that was, at the time I don't think there was too many Italian up here. There was few, but not too many. And you know, you speak uh, broken English with this uh, Scottish, uh, English, and Irish. It's a little, it's a little tough. It's a little tough. Did you find Newmarket a welcoming place to? Oh, talk to? the best city in the whole world. Very accommodate. Uh, I remember people accommodated me from every walk of life. Like uh, I had nothing but a good experience with the people of Newmark. Newmark was uh, a good town and still is a good town. I find that the people are nice. Uh, yes, it's not a city, but who wanted to live in the city? Like I raised my family in Newmark, and I don't think. I wanted to be anywhere else but Newmarket, and the only thing I have to say, Newmarket is a good place to be. It's a good place to be in business? Well, at the, at the beginning being young, like uh, I had some people down Toronto and we used to travel down there quite a bit. So yes, I miss the city because you want to be with the highlights of the city, but uh, I, I, I understood that uh, it's okay, Newmarket. And, like uh, I had in mind to get married. So I said, well, I'll stay here and, and raise my family up here. One day when I get married, I'll be, you know, I'll be, I'll be okay in Newmarket. And, and is your wife like Newmarket? Well, my wife come to, to Newmarket and she didn't know nothing about it. She has uh, people in Toronto that, uh, like she has a sister, no, she has a, uh, she has six brothers in Toronto at the time. Wow. Yeah, and they all married. Oh, she wanted to live down there to be close to them, but uh, she's strong. She never she never really looked back. Like, she was happy here. In Aurora, we were living at the time, and she was happy. She met a friend of herself, and uh, she become uh, accustomed to the area, and she was okay. The only problem at the time is she had to go to shop uh, in Aurora, and she used to go by on Young Street that there was Vicky uh, shoe repair. 
and she didn't like to go by that side because Vicky, who speaks Italian at the time, he was a very good guy, and he would come out and touch a little baby with the Vicky hands like that, <laughs> and she didn't like that, so she had to start go around Vicky's shop because she didn't want to meet them. Well, not that she didn't like him, yeah. she didn't want him to touch oh, his kids. Of course, of course. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, no. yeah. But that's just a little bit of a funny story. So over the years, what would you say are the big changes that you've seen in Newmarket? Oh, quite a bit. Like Newmarket was, uh, was just a little place. Now I consider a city. I think there's more than 100,000 people live here. According to the sign, it says 86. But I think the the province has to go change those signs because I would say so many houses been built uh, in town that uh, it's beautiful if you like to see the town growing. But uh, if you don't like to see the town growing, I, I, I'm sorry, but that's the way it goes. Everything grows in life. Uh, you know, you have uh, kids and they grow and they become old. Uh, trees, uh, you plant them and they become old, they, you know, they grow, grow, grow. It's uh, the way it is. It's, uh, it keeps it turning. Yeah, the, yeah, a lot of people don't like to see change, but uh, it's good that you embrace change. It uh, also well, keeps you young when you embrace change. I think change, it's part of life. Change, I think, is like love. Uh, the difference is... Uh, Love you, what is love? It grows on you, you know, you see somebody and then grow. So the, the change is nothing a man could do. You better embrace them because uh, that's the way it is. It, every, nothing stays still. I remember going to Venice and uh, there's an area there in the lagoon in Venice. They want to smell a little bit because it doesn't move as much. So people are the same, they like the water. If they stay in one area, you know, they kind of stink a little bit at the end. So if you gotta let them grow, grow, grow. Interesting but. analogy. So you've, you've been in three locations, then you moved down, uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, at one time we were 146, the Main Street to Millard. Then we were at 214 and now we are 239. But I had a lots and lots in Aurora. Uh, one time I had a Continental, but the bus station in uh, Newark there on Dave's Drive there across from Upper Canada Mall. I had a, a, another shop down towards Toronto that I was working on. But I, I did a lot of things in my life, I have to admit. I was lucky to be able to change around with different things. And I... I thank the people of Newmark for that. They're wonderful people. They, they allow to you your change. You know, they allow you to change. Yeah. So what uh, local organizations do you belong to? Oh boy. <laughs> I've been with the Knights of Columbus for a long time. Uh, like the church up uh, on uh, Ontario Street. Ontario Street. Yeah, I've been there for a while. And uh, I feel that I, since my family goes there, uh, I think I should help. So I become a uh, knight. And the reason why, just to give it other people the same chance to try to help them. Because I believe it's important to help the people around you. I mean, uh, I belong to the Masonic Lodge, and that's for the same reason to help uh, people who are less fortunate than you. Because uh, I think by coming to New Market, the people help me and I feel like uh, I want to help others too, if I can. Oh, wonderful. Well, I know I, I I came here, I guess I was in grade nine. I've been mm -hmm. coming here ever since. So I was, you know, outside of New Market for a little while, but even then when I came back to visit my mother, I'd come here. So. You know, I can vouch for the fact that I've known you for a long time. This is always a happening place to come. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, uh, as far as the, uh, as shall we say, the, the, the future, do you, you not like your, your father and your grandfather? You have no desire to move back to Italy? 
That's a question that's worth a million dollars. Like I say, nobody knows the future. Uh, no, nobody knows who, the growth of the future. That's why I said uh, uh, the future is like lava because if you meet the lava on the street, the letter will take it by the hand and take you whatever. So the future, I think, is the same thing. Uh, let it happen, whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't know what it is. I believe in karma. So good, do good things, and good things come back to you, and you go in whatever karma takes you. Well, your mom's still alive. Uh, yeah. yeah, she went back to Italy. She's 92 years old, and she still lives in the same house that she was born. So it was a few uh, fixing it up, because this house is very old now, but she still lives there. I have a brother who also went back to take care of my mom, and... Uh, he got married in the meantime, he's got three kids and he's over there in Italy. Mother lives in a different home from, from my brother. And she has a caregiver that goes there every day from uh, six at night, have a supper together. And she goes home the next day at 10 o'clock. So she's home about herself from 10 till six, but she's got lots of friends, uh, younger people that they stay there and they go take her to church, she'd like to participate with those people, and they always keep uh, her in mind if anything happened. You know, some people they take her to the church because she's part of the church. She loves uh, to be with people, and she finds uh, okay there, like uh, living there. She she doesn't mind. She doesn't mind because well, she was born there. She knows everybody, and uh, everybody likes her, and she she's having a good time over there. That's good. And and your wife, does, does she still have family over there or are they all over here in Toronto? Uh, my wife, she comes from 11 kids. Uh, six of them, they're boys. Oh, they're not boys now, they're men. And they live in, in, the, in, in Ontario. Like some of them in Oakville, some in Burlington, some of them in Toronto. So he, she's got a family everywhere. Like in Vaughan, she's got a couple of them in Vaughan. But she also has a one, two, three sisters who live in Italy. One lives in the same area that they were born, and the other two live in the north part of Italy, I don't know, in Torino. Uh, they had the Olympic a couple of winters ago over there in Torino. It's part uh, of Piemonte, it's uh, there on the Alps. It's at the foot of uh, Monte La Blanc, Monte Bianco. Uh, and they live there, and they got family there, and. Uh, uh, the, like uh, we travel, like we emigrate here, some of them emigrate north, some of them just stay home, like you never know what's uh, in, 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 the, in the books for you. You just take it with a little smile and everything will be fine. She's got uh, feet in both countries, you got family in both countries. Yeah, she's got, uh, yeah, yeah, and now with this uh, iPad, she talks to them and she sends the pictures every day to her sisters around whatever they are and her brothers sometimes too but she's closer to the sister than the, the brothers oh, that's cool. oh she's closer to their sister-in-law but she sends a picture to her sister most of the time yeah like her kids the grandkids and all that stuff so i think uh something i came to mind when you were talking about your grandfather is do you think uh that you would have had the courage to do what your grandfather did to Come over here with no expectations and, uh, and start a brand new life? Uh, I can't talk about that, but I think Grandpa at the time, they had a maybe, they had a maybe tough over there and they wanted to emigrate to a better future. Not just to him, but a, to his family because uh, there was a little, I mean, I wasn't around at the time, but the, the way Grandpa explained it to me, uh, it was tough there, the war was on and uh, a lot of things were not uh, the way he wanted, so he just, he just came, like, uh, he didn't know what to expect, but he had the correct courage to come and uh, see a new country, I think he did it pretty good, he did it pretty good. Well, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of people did that, I, I don't know if I have the courage to do that, that's the reason why I asked you. You know, I, I know you a little bit from over the years, and I, I think it's, 
you're a courageous person too, so you probably would have done that. And in essence, you did that because you, you set out in a new town. Yes, yes, yes. Brand new business. You were yeah, young. Yeah, yeah. But ask me if I would have moved now. Because I don't, I, the answer, I think, would have been no. So you're set in your ways now. Well, the idea is that you got your kids, so they marry now, they got grandchildren. Uh, what's there left? Why would you move anywhere else when you got your roots? When you got here, all your family all here. All your family around you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, I want to thank you very much for spending some time with us. Uh, I've been wanting to do this interview for a while, so thank you very much. What we uh, we like to do is uh, get a hold of people who have been in Newmarket for a little while, let them tell their story. Because sadly, uh, one of the things that changed in society is that uh, most of us don't share our, our our stories with other people, and I think. I found from the series that we've been doing that people love to hear about other people, particularly people they recognize or they, they've known for a while and, uh, and get some inside insight. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Dominic. Yeah, I think what you're saying is very, very well done because I remember going to France. I know this is over, but I want to tell you this story and then I stop. I went to France and we went to the Louvre, but then once we came out to the Louvre, we saw this wall like full of pictures and they had a, all different people from a different world who went to, to better life in, in, in France and they had the picture with their family and each one of them had a story underneath, very small story like where they come from, what kind of work they were doing and all that. And I thought that at the time, even now I think it was a beautiful thing. Like I, at one time I was talking to Tom Taylor, I think is the main street, they should do the same idea. You know, have a, the high school, take a picture of people, family, whatever, and then they put a little history. I guarantee you there were a lot of people from different parts of Ontario here, like, I don't know, as far as there, Aurelia, you know, maybe Burlington, Oakville. You know, if they got, a, you know, grandkids who are in school, they will come just to see the art that their grandkids have did it. Like I learned in there in, in, in Paris, to me, I was, I didn't know anybody there, but it was very nice to see something, you know, because I think the countries are more prosperous when they embrace other people from other parts of the world and mix it up because uh, like maybe New Market, uh, not as much as Toronto, but it's a multicultural in Toronto and they made a mosaic of different people. And I think it's a beautiful city, a wonderful city. I think we all should start and em em embrace everyone and just say hi and, and love everyone because that will be a, a one, well, it is already a wonderful place to live, but will be better place. And I think in the world today, like they would like to be like it is Toronto. Toronto become a big city. What to all the around like York and, uh, uh, the Burlington, the, the other side, like uh, even as far as Kingston, they love Toronto. Well, not everybody in Canada loves Toronto, but that's that's topic for another interview. We yeah, talk yeah. about why why people are envious of Toronto. But thank you very much for your time, uh, for making time, and uh, please, uh, all you people out there, uh, please stay tuned. We have uh, more people who are going to be interviewed. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, Ted Boyd, who is Charles Boyd's son, who will tell us a little bit about the the, uh, the, the past of the Boyd family uh, here in Newmarket. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Have a good evening. <laughs>